Servus. Der Tobi und ich sind in hey there, Tobi and I made it up to Kanjin Gompa. Kanjin Gompa is the highest village in the Langtang Valley. Until the big earthquake, the Langtang trek was one of the great classic treks of Nepal. But despite the trails and lodges are all very well rebuilt, unfortunately still there aren't nearly as many trekkers here as there were before the earthquake. The classic Langtang trek starts in Siabrubesi. However, the first three to four hours walk from there are not included in this video. If you're interested in transportation to and back from Siabrubesi, you can find some information in our video about the Tamang Heritage Trail. We did that hike right before the start of our Langtang trek. That's also the reason why we started our trek in Kangjim, from where we took the scenic upper trail into the Langtang Valley. The direct trail from Siabrubesi follows the Langtang Kola through the villages of Bambu and Rimche, where it meets the high trail from Kangjim. Most trekkers then spend their first night in Lama Hotel or two and a half hours further in Riverside or the Woodlands Lodge. If you would like to hike the upper trail, like we do, you can climb directly up from Siabrubesi to Kangjim. This trail then passes through Sherpa Gaon before it reaches Rimche. The views up here are much better than down in the valley. With this detour, however, you probably only make it to Sherpa Gaon on your first day. Since we started the day in Kangjim, we managed to get as far as Riverside. Until the earthquake, the main trail followed the east bank of the river. But since then it's blocked by several big landslides. However, with help from international aid, a new trail has been constructed on the west side of the valley. In the morning it's rather damp and chilly here. The sunlight won't reach this part of the gorge until midday. Regardless, the cattle spends the winter down here in the clearings, while the yaks stay in the upper Langtang Valley year-round. In the place where Langtang village used to be, we only find deserted moonscape. On April 25th, 2015, the earthquake causes a gigantic landslide, wiping the whole village with all people in it from the map within just a few seconds.
Meanwhile, Langtang was rebuilt a few kilometers further up the valley. Most buildings, however, are now huge and very comfortable lodges. According to the locals though, tourist numbers are still only half as high as they used to be before the disaster. On a third day we hike on to Kanchen Gompa, passing the probably longest Mani wall in all of Nepal, shortly after the village of Mundu. For the trek to Kanjingompa, you'll only need half a day. Lodges here are all brand new and almost luxurious, just like in Langtang village. From here in Kanjin Gompa, you can do several great day hikes. You can, for example, climb Kanjinri, which is the mountain right behind me. Or you can just hike up the valley as far as you like and back. We decide to climb Kanjinri on the same afternoon. The round trip takes about 4 hours. It's not far, but fairly steep in a couple of places. The trail into the upper Langtang valley is mostly flat and easy. The landscape, however, is still very impressive. If you have time for day trips from Kanjin Kompa, don't miss this hike. In the evening, we decide to look around Kanjin Gompa some more. North of the village, you can find the eponymous temple. On the way back, we pay a visit to the local cheese factory and use the chance to buy some provisions for the day after. The most challenging day trip from Kanjin Gompa is arguably climbing Chakuri. That is exactly what we want to try tomorrow.
Servus. Hey guys, we're here at Czerkori. It's roughly a 1200 meters climb. We started at 7 in the morning and now it's about 11, so it took us roughly 4 hours up here. Especially the last, like 250 meters of altitude are very hard. You have to scramble across a bunch of rather large rocks. The way is pretty steep for the most part. Occasionally it can also be extremely steep. The view from here is absolutely awesome. But before I can enjoy this, I need to catch my breath. Besides the direct descent from Kanjinkompa, there is also a longer but less steep trail on the east side of Cherkuri. Estimate about 3 hours for the descent. Talking about descending, we meanwhile descended from the Langtang Valley. Going down works pretty much just like going up. Once you reach the village of Rimche on your way down, you've got three options. You can either take a left and walk down the direct trail along the river all the way to Siabrubesi, or you go right and follow the high trail to Kangjim and descend from there, or you do what we did and follow the river halfway down before you take a left and climb up to Tulu Siabru from there. From Lama Hotel, we take a left trail in Rimche and descend along the river towards Siabrubesi. About one hour behind bamboo, we reached the fork to Tulu Siabro and with that towards Gozang Kund. The climb to Tulu Siabro takes about two hours from here. If you only want to get down to Siabro Besi, just continue straight on. Without the day trips from Kanjingompa, you need 5 days from and back to Siabrubesi. For getting there and back to Kathmandu, you need 1 day each way. You can buy the ticket to the Langtang National Park for about $30 on the way in Dunche. In fall 2018, we did not need a team's permit for this trek. A guide is also not compulsory. Getting lost is pretty much impossible all the way up to Kanjingompa. There, you'll sleep at about 3800 meters which means you can get altitude sick if you ascend too quickly. Also, you probably shouldn't climb Cherkori on your first day in Kanjingompa. Making an overnight stop somewhere between Lama Hotel and Kanjingompa is necessary if you're not already acclimatized. Langtang Valley feels way more touristy than the Tamang Heritage Trail. However, not nearly as touristy as the Everest or the Annapurna region. You're maximum two or three days away from the next road at all times. So the Langtang Valley is not an extremely remote part of the Himalaya. The lodges in and around Lama Hotel are all relatively basic. Further up, you'll find many brand new, big and extremely comfortable lodges. These are a little more expensive than the ones further down or the ones on the Tamang Heritage Trail though. You can calculate with about $30 per person per day. 
Except for some yak herders, the whole valley is focusing completely on tourism. Also, due to the earthquake and the landslide disaster from 2015, there is not much genuine village life to be found in the Langtang Valley. From the dense forests in the lower gorge up to glaciers and snow-capped 7000 ers this trek delivers pretty much everything you could ask for. Especially Langtang Lerung towers very impressively over the valley. From Chakori you can see several more beautiful 6000 ers because of similar length and altitude, the Langtang trek could be a possible alternative for the Annapurna base camp trek. While that one is hopelessly overcrowded, Langtang desperately needs more visitors. Besides that, the lodges here are more comfortable, and despite you can't see an 8000er, the landscape is similarly impressive as what you can see on the way to ABC. From here in Tulus Jabru, we will hike up to the holy lakes of Gosa and Kund. There we want to try to climb Surya Peak, which is more than 5000 meters of altitude. Then we want to cross the Laurebina Pass and walk through Helambu all the way back to Kathmandu. And that we will show you in the next part.